after our final at sea day, we've arrived at our next destination. Where in the world are we? We are in Malaga, Spain. We've decided to forego any of the excursions offered by the cruise and we're just going to wander around the city here a little bit. There's a little bit of a preview behind us of where we want to go. After looking on Google Maps, it looks like most of the sites we want to see are within a mile and a half walking distance. Although um, one of them is up quite a steep hill it looks like, but yeah. I think Felicia will survive. So <laughs> we'll see how the day goes. We have to be back on the ship by 3 p.m. So we tried to get an early start today and we'll see what we can find. So guys, explain to me how I marry like the one guy who has to walk everywhere. We've already walked up a series of steps, but look at these steps behind me. They're kind of like step ramp hybrid kind of thing. But explain to me how it is that I have to walk all the way up to there. I'm sure there's a car or a bus or something that takes and us We'll there. figure it out when we get to the top. But you know, these are going like at an angle up the hill. We could be going like straight up the hill that way, you know, make a little mountain climbing expedition out of it. That'd be great, but no, I'll go for the steps. All right, we'll go with the steps. Okay. Keep going. You can make it. I know you can. You're almost there. Just one more set of ramps and steps to go. I swear, this is the last ramp that we have to go up. There can't be any more. It's not far now. Cross my heart, hope to die. I swear this is the last switchback. We'll see. I didn't lie, there are no more switchbacks, but the path might still go on for quite a ways up this hill. So Jeff kind of joked that we could go straight up instead of taking the switchbacks and the, the little stair slash ramp things all the way up. We actually did come across a gentleman who is climbing this right behind me. Uh, it's probably about a, maybe, I don't know what degree angle, but a lot degree angle. How's that um, to come straight up this hill? So I'm interested to see how long it takes him and how far we'll be when he meets us. So one really cool thing about this part of the world, um, I guess cool now, not cool then, is for about 400 years, the Moors, who were the uh, Muslims from Morocco, actually came and occupied a good portion of the peninsula. So a lot of Spain, a lot of Portugal, we have a lot of like Arabic influence on those things. And this building behind me, which is the town hall, is like a perfect example of that. Like you can kind of see starting a little bit onion shaped dome, but not quite onion shaped and a lot of like um, intricacies that go along with Spanish architecture. But if you know um, a little bit about Muslim architecture, you know there's quite a bit of that that's shown here too in the arches and the domes and those kind of things. Well, after much climbing, we've arrived at our first destination, Gibrofaro Castle or Castillo de Gibrofaro. It was 11 euros for the two of us to get in here, so 550 each. It actually gives us admission to this castle and Alcazaba, which we'll be showing you here in a little while. It's a little another castle type monument, palace fortification further down the hill. Um, but you have 48 hours to, I think, enter both destinations as many times as you want for 11 euros. It opens at 9 a.m. There was a little bit of a line. We got here at about 8.50 or so and yeah. just had to wait for a little while. And there are actually um, electronic ticket machines that you can use to buy your tickets. You could pay with card, you could pay with cash, and it was actually a relatively quick and easy process. Just a quick correction on my pronunciation from earlier. It's Hebrofaro, not Gibrofaro. There are actually guidebooks that are by the entrance. So of course we grabbed the one that's in English and inside of the guidebook, besides a map, is a little QR code and you can scan it and it'll load a web page and it gives you a bunch of little audio clips and they're numbered throughout the palace for both here and Alcazabra that tell you a little bit about it. And I realized during one of those audio clips that I was pronouncing it wrong. So 
So this uh, castle, this fortification, has kind of a really unique structure. It actually was first settled by the Phoenicians about seven centuries BCE. So the outside wall that you see was actually built by the Phoenicians, and there was a lighthouse inside of it. The lighthouse has since gone, and then when the Moors came into power in about the 10 hundreds or 11 hundreds, um, then they built the fortress inside of it, which is what we are standing in right now. One thing that Felicia likes about all of these really old buildings in Europe, it makes her feel like a giant. look at the original wall that was built by the Phoenicians in order to um, encase the lighthouse that was up here so you can see a lot of the original wall is still left and then of course they've made repairs at various points in history with cement. So you can see right behind us here uh, looking down from the hill is the Alcathaba palace as well. This uh, later fortress was actually built to protect that fortress or that palace where the, the royalty lived during that time. So we're going to head there next and uh, we'll see you there. So I just want to point out there is a road that comes up here to the castle. Um, you can see a tour bus dropping people off. There are various taxis and those kind of things up here as well. So if you're not up for the walk, it is 130 meters uh, from where we started to where we ended. So it's 130 meters of walking up cobblestone and limestone. So if you're not up for that, there is a way to get here. Um, we haven't looked into the prices of buses or taxis or the electric cars that you can rent or any of that kind of stuff because really honestly, we're just walkers. We like a walkable city, but um, I'm sure that those things would be really easy to find online as well. So we made it down the hill from the castle to the Alcazaba. Not very far distance, but I was following Google walking directions. It mostly had me headed in the right direction, but got a little misleading. Wanted me to go through a gate that was not open. Basically, stay till the stay to the downhill side of the Alcazaba. Followed around. There's a point on the end of it, and then you'll see the entrance. You can't miss it. It's by um, an old Roman theater that we'll hope to show you a little bit more of. And so we just came in the entrance, and we're going to explore a little bit and show you what's going on here at Alcazaba. We've only made it a little bit of the way into the palace here. It's definitely somewhat of a maze. We did not happen to grab a guide map this time. Um, so I suggest you might want to do that. Uh, but definitely wander around. There are lots of pretty gardens, castle walls. If you want to talk a little bit about the architecture. Yeah, the architecture is super interesting. It's kind of Romanesque, but not really. It's got a lot of um, Muslim influences, like keyhole shaped doorways and those kind of things. Um, the gardens are amazing. This. Um, this particular area is just kind of a little courtyard that has a lot of really great greenery and you know plants from various areas of the world. Um, but we're gonna keep going up and we'll let you know. We're about maybe halfway up the mountain from where we started at the bottom this morning. So, um, you know, still quite a hike, even if you just wanna come to here. But again, there are ways that you can get here other than walking. Yeah, and definitely not wheelchair friendly. There are all kinds of weird angles and steps yeah. and troughs with water running through them. So definitely watch your step and wear a good pair of shoes. Yes. Don't. 
drink the water. top of that hill. Um, the castle up there, the fortification there was actually connected to the fortification here. I think it still is, but it's closed for you to get to it. So I mentioned that this was actually built, or that was actually built as a fortification for this um, in the 10 and 1100s. So um, that housed soldiers and weapons and those kind of things, whereas this was kind of the royal palace. Um, over here, you can see um, a bullfighting arena and so that arena was opened in 1876 I don't know much more about it other than that um, looks like it's still active it looks right now you can't see it from here but we can see it from the ship that it looked like it was kind of set up right now for a um, a concert maybe outside a Roman theater here in um, Malaga and so this theater supposedly was used during the first principality of Caesar Augustus so that would have been around 100 or so um, CE or AD and it was used up through the third century and then it was covered over it was buried and then um, through an archaeological dig it was rediscovered in 1951 so this would have been a place where there were um, animal fightings gladiators those kind of things there are some underground cells where the animals were kept and then of course like the concert stages and the plays and things like that would have been done up above. All right, we walked about a quarter mile from our last destination over here to the Catholic Cathedral. It has a specific name. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but it's built in around the 16th century or so. I believe it's about eight euros or so to get in, but when we walked around the side, it looked like there's a pretty long line to get in. I think you can also pay an additional four euros and there's a walkway at the top of the church that you can get some pretty good views of the city, but I think we had some pretty spectacular views at the last couple places we were at. I don't know if you want to mention the architecture at all. Yeah, so this is definitely a stunning example of Baroque architecture from, you know, the high middle ages. It's really, really some outstanding detail in some of this, and my understanding is that the inside, even more so, and it's choir stalls and like those kind of things, um, the art and, and those sorts of things would be really an example of Baroque, but we kind of knew ahead of time we were not going to be going into this cathedral because we were doing some other things. Um, it's a short day for us. We actually have all aboard at three o'clock this afternoon so I'm um, not really even a full day here and it's really hot and we just didn't feel the need to dress in you know long pants and shoulders covered on a day like today um, when we had so many other great things that we could see throughout the city. Yeah, now I think we're gonna go find some place to get something to drink something to eat. Absolutely. stopped here uh, very near to the cathedral at a little place called Les Pirinhas. and so I've ordered the Les Pirinhas salad and Jeff has ordered the fried potatoes um, along with a pint and I got a Verdero um, wine so we're gonna see how that is first. Let's try that. It's a little drier than I like it but it's okay. Um, this is the salad with some chicken and tomatoes and various vegetables and things in it. So let's give that a quick little, little try with some kind of 
um, honey vinaigrette, I think, mustard vinaigrette dressing. Mm, that's really good. And then I'm gonna be the one to try just potatoes too, because you know, why not? I don't know what this sauce is, but it looks delicious, so I'm gonna try it. Mm, that's really good. We just finished our lunch and we wanted to walk off some of those calories we ate and drank so just under a half a mile away from the Catholic Cathedral where we had lunch just outside of is the birthplace of a very famous artist. Pablo Picasso was born in this house just behind us on the 25th of October 1881. Along the way we passed another building that is an actual Picasso museum. The one behind us is a museum of his birthplace, but there's a whole other birth, or a whole other museum dedicated to his artwork and other things. Uh, not sure of the price to get into either one of them. Um, not really something we have a desire to go see today, but we figure it's a good place to walk by. And we didn't even realize that Picasso was born here until we started walking around the city. And there was obviously a lot of little stalls and vendors and things selling a lot of Picasso replicas, artwork, pins and things like that. So right behind us is where Picasso was born. Well, we've got a little bit of time that we have to kill before we really have to head back to the ship. We're going to walk through a park that's near the waterfront here shortly, but I figured we could have one more drink. Let's just, just having water, but I'm having a local beer. Couldn't tell you what brand it is, but uh, it's quite good. Cheers. Well, we've got to head back to the ship in less than an hour to head off to our next destination. So we're on a short little stop here on the way back to the ship through this nice little park. It's a little breeze coming off the water here, a little bit of shade. So tell me, Felicia, what are your thoughts on the city? Well, I will say this. Um, when we first docked, I thought to myself, wow, at first glance, this is not a pretty city. What you see are a lot of like 60s and 70s apartment buildings, um, semi-high rises with, you know, um, I don't know how to explain, but the cement with the cutouts for, on the balconies, you know, a lot of things that, that are very dated. But once you get past all that and you get into the old part of the city, it's actually a really beautiful city. Um, you know, I definitely would return here. I don't know that I go particularly out of my way just yeah. because, like, we've kind of done the, the big stuff to do. But I'd definitely return here. Yeah, I agree. You know, at some point we'd like to come back to Spain, spend a little bit more time. We'll probably hit the bigger cities like Barcelona, Madrid. I would guess a city like this is probably a little bit cheaper to stay at. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Mm. But anyway, I think that wraps it up for this day trip here into the city. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see where we're headed to next. Just as a little hint of where the next stop is, I think we're supposed to take a pill with a Swedish DJ who's no longer alive. I think that might be the case. <laughs>